Mini Matters, a miniature and painting podcast. Right, Jamie. I thought we would discuss some more breaking news now that we're starting to do this. A quick, a quick discussion that we can put out. Um, there's been three box sets that have been released by Games Workshop. Have you have you seen them? I've refused to look. I want look, uh, for this for this episode. Yeah, no, I, it's a complete right a suspicion to know what one of them is. Well, if you pull up if you pull up the screen, because I've forgotten what they're called, but the first one <laughs> is, is, is Blitz Bowl. Um, the reason I wanted to cover this is because these are three mini games that Games Workshop are going to release, and they've just announced that they're releasing. Um, now, historically, they've done this, but they've only done it in America, and they've issued them in bookstores like Barnes and Noble, which is, I think, their equivalent of Waterstones in America. The reason I wanted to cover this release, however, is now that they're releasing it in the UK as well, um, but they're not going to be released in traditional game stores. They're going to be released in local independents like um, what, one of the brands that has been mentioned is Game and Computer Game Store. So once again, it's a it's a change in tactic in terms of distributor um, and trying to capture uh, a new audience. Um, so if we look at the three mini box sets first, the first one is Blitz Bowl. So that, um, that is, I mean, that sounds like Blood Bowl. It is, yeah. It's Blood Bowl. The original Blitz Bowl, when it was released years ago, was was kind of an alternative to Blood Bowl, but it was played in a dungeon. Um, this edition, however, looks like it's a, a, a cut down size of Blood Bowl. So if you look at the contents there, you've got less players per team. You've got a smaller pitch. It's so, it, so, it, so it's designed as an entry level, uh, yeah. entry level game, which is a bit more simpler than Blood Bowl. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to say anything because I've been. <laughs> no, well. No. Well, well, I can. I totally about... can. Like, like. <laughs> <laughs> like it looks great mate yeah let's buy it no um i've never played bud bowl I, I know you said you have but yeah I d something about death really puts me off it because people are dying in it aren't they i think <laughs> people die most of most of games <laughs> workshop stuff don't they that's yeah, like they your points no i think what, game, um, what games of 40k have you been playing well i like to just make elder happy and no one ever dies do you know what i mean yeah. They actually take over the universe, but with magic. So no, and they just disappear. No, um, yeah. I I I thought we were going to run through them all, but should we? Yeah, let's. I think yeah. I think more than talking about the games themselves, let's just run through them all quickly and just talk about the concept and and what we think we're doing with them. So the next one there is Rise of Orcs. It's basically set in the forty k universe. You've got Terminators versus Orcs. Uh, it's in a little, little exploration game with tiles, a bit like a really basic version of Space Hulk or, or, or Space mm. Crusade. Uh, but all you've got there is models for the Terminators, um, which were before exclusively only found in the Terminators Space Marine Hero set that came out. So now you can get them in there. And then there's blimps or tokens representing the enemies. So you don't have too oh, many interesting. to worry about. Yeah, so that's cut that cut down and simplified. All these games, as well, from my brief reading of it, are designed to be about played in about thirty minutes, um, yeah, which is good, so, isn't it? Because yeah, sometimes Games Workshop, the Warhammer games, do take a long time. And then the next one, or the last one, is Crypt Hunters. So that this one's set in their AOS um, universe, Age of Sigma. And you play Sigmarites, uh, Stormcast Eternals. Sorry, I, Sigmarites is a nickname. Stormcast Eternals, and basically it's a kind of dungeon exploring game. You've got a few undead there, um, and you control. It's a cooperative game. You control the character each, and you you kind of work through the the mini tiles there and defeat the the, the enemies. But once again, that's kind of a cut down Warhammer Quest or uh, mm. Hero Quest esque game. Um, so basically, what you've got there is you've got Three small games, um, a few miniatures to get you used to it, but not too many. Um, Thirty-minute playing style, but more importantly, you're going to be buying these from game shops. When I say game shops in the UK, we've got a computer game shop called Game, um, so it's a different kind of retailer um, in order to try and get people in. What do you think about this tactic, Jamie? Do you think it will work? What do you think they're up to? But it depends what they're after. Like, have you have you ever played one of these smaller mini games? Like games I, 
I haven't, and normally I wouldn't look at them. But now that mm. I've got two daughters, one who's age eight, one who's age five, these are starting to appeal to me more. Yeah, I think I do. The thing is, they already had them, right? Like, I bought a couple of the games to play with my wife, and she was like, definitely, like, 20 quid. <laughs> and it's still sealed, like, in our gaming cupboard. Like, I don't know why I was naive enough. And I was like, look, it's two-player. The games only take 20 minutes. But I... It's something about, yeah, I, I, I don't know, I guess, what the motivation is for Games Workshop other than I don't think they're trying to make a lot of money from these. I think, like you said, they just want to broaden their horizons. They just want to get new players because, yeah, as we all know, you start young, you do crap for a while, then you get out when women or men exist, and then you get back in when you have actually found a partner. And then yeah. you've got more capital then, and you just spunk loads of money. Hmm. So I, think, I think I think I think as products are very good to get. I mean, you got their three main universes there, haven't you? You got Blood yeah, Bowl, true. which is a big yeah. game for them. You got Forty K, and you've got um, Age of Sigma. So it's a kind of taster into that world. I I'm more interested in where they're actually mm. selling them. Um, I, I I think the, the the products themselves make complete sense. Yeah. Do you think they're going to pick up much custom from the computer gaming community? Because yeah, that that, that that's that's where these are going to be. They're, I mean, they may be sold in games workshops, but it's quite clear clear there that they're looking at putting them in retailers where they wouldn't normally have a footfall. So yeah. do you think your average gamer who's going to go along and buy Call of Duty, whatever, is going to pick this up and see this and be enticed by it? Because you're well, a gamer, aren't you? Yeah, the thing is that like, they've tried it and it failed, didn't it? With, um, they it they sold a whole lot of... Well, they had so much stock left over, game did, that they were selling. So they had like Battle of Vakratis or Battle of, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was basically what, what they started doing Vakrat, was, yeah. exactly, they they were selling uh, Orc uh, war trucks, like a small squad of Space Marines. And they were all mm -hmm. um, like easily built, you know, like you had the model and you click and push. Uh, mm. And then, like, I don't know how long it was, but very soon, it felt soon anyway, but they were selling them for half price. So yeah. a 40 quid box you got for 20 quid. And then obviously us gamers started buying them because we were like, oh, I don't know, cheap models. But so I think game is a, is the, is a weird choice because they're selling computer games. Hmm. Um, and they don't sell any other board games that I'm aware of. I would have thought, yeah, an independent game shop would make more sense. You know, maybe, maybe they will as well, but I think I think the distinction with the the uh, the one that you make reference to, whatever it was called, Attack on the Crag, or whatever, it was kind <laughs> Attack of Attack on the Crag. Kind of, it was. <laughs> it was. It was <coughs> Dan, I'm trying to make a serious point here. Dan. Uh, it was it was the 40k game, wasn't it? Kind of downscale. Yeah. You still have, you, yeah. you still needed a. Whereas these tend to be board games. Everything you've got is inside the box. It's tile yeah. based. So it's slightly more accessible in that sense. Whereas with that, you would still need a, a battle mat. You would still need tape measures. You would still need the auxil auxiliary stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. This is, so yeah, I suppose before it wasn't actually a game. It was just models. Whereas now yeah. it's, it is actually a game. But do games sell? Like, do they sell board games? I don't, I, it's, like I said, well, I, think, I, I think in our, our last video when we talked about uh, Hobby Burnout, I said the last time I played a console was a PlayStation mm. 3, so I'm well behind. I've not been in the game shop for years, but... but who you, even you goes do... into game shops? Like, I, I, well, it's tough. I mean, you do get random stuff. Don't they sell, like, fun Funko Pops and things like that? I... I do, yeah, I know. I do know what you mean. That, like... there's, an, there's an element of the collector's gene, isn't there, with computer game players? Because they'll, they'll go and buy the limited edition release, yeah. which comes in, I don't know, which has a sound really... <laughs> I mean, but, but well, has, you know, yeah, they'll have, have like, they'll have bonuses, special things that you don't get normally. Yeah, yeah, but also sometimes don't they come with like statues or maybe uh, a, a yeah, kind yeah, of they do. Like course. Diablo Two just released a a, a bust of Diablo because it's right. twenty years old, for example. Um, and like when I bought Diablo Three Collector's Edition box set or Starcraft Collector's Edition, yeah, they had like a small USB pen that had, and then a T-shirt, and so. Absolutely, yes. Busts and statues are things that people like. Um, are still a little bit different from this. This is this is something that mm. I don't think I've ever seen. 
like obviously I think games sell Magic the Gathering cards potentially. Yeah. And that is getting more towards this, isn't it? Because it's a it's essentially a board game. Mm. I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know how it'll work. Like the last time I went into game properly was when they were selling Heroes of Might and Magic three in a sold out box. So a long time ago. Um just because everything is quite expensive. I, su I suppose the other element as well is maybe we don't understand it because we're so far into the hobby now. But once again, mm. we all have that experience where we walked into Toys R Us and we saw Hero Quest for the first time and we saw mm. Space Crusade. Um, yeah, maybe it caught your imagination already... a little bit. Yeah, well, maybe people are already into Games Workshop who are going to a Games Workshop and buying higher end stuff like Space Hulk and whatnot didn't understand the strategy then. But maybe this isn't for us to understand. Maybe this is for the 11-year-old Jamie or the 11-year-old Lionel to walk in and this is his in-route because Toys R Us doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, that I mean, that does make sense because it is somewhere where they... I, that probably is the tactical reason. They know that kids are going to go to the shop who aren't into Games Workshop mm -hmm. products and mm -hmm. then they'll see, like, they'll see these... You know these art boxes, which interestingly I hadn't really noticed, but there's that one less so, but still a bit. They're super vibrant, yeah. and the thing that really caught my attention as a kid was just these, just the like, artwork. Yeah, cause especially because back back when you know in the eighties, nineties, things were already quite bright anyway. But even in a world where things were bright, Games Workshop boxes were still like, you yeah. know, fluorescent bloody blue or turquoise and like yeah. And this now is is probably more vibrant, so it must be a deliberate choice. And I do, I do yeah. I mean, I'm all for it. I think, uh, especially if they bring back like the old world, which they are doing, and stop like you know elder dying so much. I think it will work. I think it will work well. I, ironically enough, I, I'll probably go looking for these. I don't know if I'll pick them up, but I'll go looking yeah. for them to see to see how simple the rules are. Because if it's mm -hmm. thirty minutes to play, and it's a relatively cheap buy-in. If my daughters want to have a go at painting them, then I'm not too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like Dad. Can I can I paint that limited edition space hulk? No, no, I don't <laughs> think so. Whereas, yeah. whereas with this, if it's a relatively low buy-in, they they can have yeah, some fun painting it, wanna... and then they can. Um, I don't think we've got any details on prices yet. I just um, tried to check. It's interesting they don't have. So, so the fact that it's linked us to the Blood Bowl page kind of makes me think that they'll have rules for. Potentially all the models that you can buy through Blood Bowl. Oh yeah, I think yeah, and be... yeah, and just a separate um, yeah, because I'm pretty sure I remember at the the back of the Space Hulk rule book wasn't there. If you want to know more, and there was there oh, was really? yeah there was models there from the main range. So yeah, that's clearly the tactic, um, and obviously fair play to them for trying. I just like you said, I think it made more sense in Toys R Us because you went into the board game section and you found a board game. Yeah. Um, so you kind of had a more of a uh, bespoke market here. I'm just wondering whether you can convert somebody who's going in to buy Call of Duty. I keep making reference to Call of Duty because it's going to go on at Call oh, of Duty is... Five, People do and then like he's going to go, they? "Oh, I like the look of that board game where I can be a medieval knight as well, <laughs> or a space marine in in or a, or a space marine." Yeah, more a aptly probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'd like to hear from our viewers what they think as well. To be honest, because Basically, neither of us know. We can take educated guesses. I, I, I think, oddly, I never know how successful these boxes are because they always stop making them. Like, all of the mm. small boxes they did, they were limited runs. So, right. normally, and, and they were limited runs from the start. So, Games Workshop knew, right, we'll make, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000 units, and then that's it. Whereas, obviously, the, in the past, they used to just kind of make the boxes obviously unless the new version came out until they stopped selling yeah like so i never really get off scope of how popular these things were lots of people had them but so that's that's why i was i don't know i suppose it doesn't I, matter for us but i do i do wonder as well whether um these might sell better in other bigger countries because obviously in england mm. we're we're relatively small by comparison we've pretty mm. much got a games workshop now in every city haven't we you're never far from a games workshop or an, yeah. or an independent seller. Whereas I know 
um, some people in America and Australia, they can drive for hours before they find mm. an independent independent stockist, let alone let alone a games workshop. So maybe if these are now going into more household names, yeah, um, more it might work yeah. better. It might it might work better in foreign ter- territories than it would do here in the, in the UK. I think I think it is like especially I don't know how big Barnes and Noble are, but that is, is what you've just said. There is a is a very interesting business plan basically to and i'd also be interested and we'll never know but how many units barnes and noble committed to either either buying and selling or you know i wonder what that business model is that they've got Mm. yeah i think um i think games workshop haven't got many things wrong for the last like what four years probably no something and 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 maybe this is the harder sell but maybe they've 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 had all the low bearing fruit in that sense, mm-hmm. in terms of they've they've saturated all the markets they can do, so they might as well try and break break some new ones. There's no doubt yeah. some boffins have sat back. This isn't like a kind of yeah, yeah. yeah some yeah, guys yeah. have sat back, marketed it. You know, they 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 know they do know what they're doing. I I think for me, I think it's interesting because I'm not too sure whether it's going to work well in the UK, but I think this is probably mm-hmm. more so for bigger countries who yeah. don't have as many gws as we do and then you have to sell it and yeah they want to sell it again which is because i've also it's also interesting that they've only chosen one retailer um for, the UK, for each country yeah. well also they've got uh, barnes and noble for the us and then they've got the german yeah. one for germany so they're they're only trialing in i don't know what it's called three places but it's just interesting that they haven't distributed well i mean they might do so we're all it's conjecture isn't it but I, th- I, th- I think just... I think Barnes and Noble is like Waterstones is one in every city in in the yeah, yeah. It's, yeah you you can always yeah. find one. Yeah. Um, so um, it's it's cheaper than opening up a bricks and mortar store, isn't it? Yeah, there's not many overheads for selling in someone else's shop. No. To be honest with you, um, yeah. Well, I mean, let's let's see where it goes and. I think it's a good choice for Games Workshop. If we can get more people into the hobby in general, it broadens it for everyone, like Dragonheads, you know. So uh, <laughs> it's always a good thing. Yeah, and I think once again, like I said, providing the price is right, you might get some dads or mums who mm, think, you know what, it. at that price, I'll, I'll Christmas I'll present. My, yeah, I'll pick one up for my kids and see and see whether they enjoy it or not, which you probably wouldn't do with some of the standard price stuff from GW, because they're yeah. not cheap. Yeah, I, I know some of the smaller boxes were 20 quid, uh, like three or four years ago. And I think yeah. 20 quid for a board game price is, like for a small board game price as well, is yeah. like, yeah, it's it's not super expensive, it's not super cheap. Like, I don't know, like Cards Against Humanity is like 20 quid, isn't it? And that's just cards, so. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Interesting. Be interesting to know what people think, whether they're going to pick one up themselves or who they think it's aimed at or whether they think it's going to work. Be interested to see in the comments. Yeah, definitely. And uh, if you liked it, you know, and you want to see more of me and Lionel and the crew, you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. Subscribe, yeah. like. And share. like, yeah, and comment. There's just four things. Anyway, cheers, guys. See you later.